Hey guys, happy Tuesday evening, uh, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Hopefully you had a fabulous Thanksgiving week and um, and worked off some of the calories that maybe you put on in those couple of days uh, through Thanksgiving. So I wanted to just uh, join you tonight. Last week, uh, Monday, I shared some content uh, about the general market uh, uh, performance and broader sec sectors of the economy, what's happening in other industries, etc. cetera. Uh, and I also shared that uh, in recent weeks, I shared some details on how to best prepare yourself for a bidding war if you are a buyer. And last week, I suggested tonight uh, I wanted to bring on some content on how to choose the best offer in a bidding war if you're a seller. So I'm going to jump right in and hopefully get through this quickly. How to choose the best offer in a bidding war if you know anyone that sold a home over the course of the last couple of months since really the early summer. Uh, then you probably know some people that have uh, participated in a, in a bidding war on their house. And so I wanted to go over a couple of the details. Um, right now, uh, a recent industry study had revealed that nearly half of the recent home sales in the last couple of months have included bidding wars, had included multiple offers, uh, AKA. And um, one of the things that I wanted to just start off, like there's four ways that, I, that I've included here on how to make the most of your home sale uh, in today's environment. Number one, how do we turn up the competitive heat? First of all, like before we even enter the market, uh, the reality is, is we have to just pay really close attention, study the market, study pricing. The better the value proposition is for your home uh, as we enter the market, the greater the likelihood is that we end up in a multiple offer situation. Secondly, how we present it, how we present and launch your listing uh, to the market so that it has the best possible uh, reaction uh, and response from the market. That includes great photography, it includes things like virtual reality walkthroughs, accurate details, uh, and employing the, 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 you know, the skills of a really strong digital marketer that can take advantage of, uh, of today's technology. So that's number one, put ourselves in a position to get the best response um, that we can get. Number two, now let's fast forward and assume we're in a position where we have, uh, we either have multiple offers or we are uh, trajecting towards and, and ultimately expecting that multiple offers are gonna be forthcoming, right? We've always heard the expression in real estate that the first offer is your best offer. In these environments, obviously not always the case. In fact, I always say that the second buyer that wants to make an offer actually has a little bit of an advantage because they have the information available to them uh, that there is other interest already so they can position themselves to make a stronger initial offer. So a little bit of an advantage in that environment. Um, what we typically do, it's common to set a deadline, set what we call uh, a deadline to create uh, for when offers are due. In some MLSs around the country, I have a lot of friends, actually have a couple coaching clients in San Francisco, which is which pre-pandemic uh, was a wildly fast moving market. Um, at time of listing, when an agent puts the home on the market, there would actually be a bid deadline uh, entered directly into MLS, um, viewable publicly so that buyers, when buyers are viewing it online, they know immediately when offers are due uh, because the, the market was moving so fast uh, that the expectation for multiple offers was essentially on every listing. Um, so setting a deadline for when the buyer's highest and best offer is due. Next, how do we move on? How do we evaluate and select the best uh, offer of the offers that we get? How strong is the buyer and how certain can we make this transaction? I'd like to describe it as though we want to, we want to create the most amount of certainty uh, and, and assurance that the buyer is not only going to be able to, to make and, and offer the best terms, but provide the, the best uh, opportunity and, uh, and, and reality that the performance is going to complete, they're going to complete the purchase, and, uh, and the seller is going to achieve ultimately what their goal is. So um, we look at a couple considerations when we evaluate the certainty of the buyer. What is their closing date? Does it work with your timeline? How flexible are they for you know on timing? Some sellers um, obviously want to move very quickly. If a home is not occupied, then it then it certainly in most cases behooves a seller to want to sell rather fast. But there's some in instances where a seller doesn't yet know where they're going to move to, so they want actually a little bit more time. So how flexible the buyer is is important. Um, obviously, finance 
Are they an all-cash buyer? Um, are they are they obtaining financing? How financially secure are they? What's their down payment? What's their earnest money deposit? That's obviously important uh, in demonstrating their good faith and, uh, and seriousness. Obviously, we want to have a pre-approval. And then are there any contingencies? Are there appraisal contingencies? We're in a very fast-moving market. If you have questions about what that means on including or uh, or precluding appraisal contingencies, just message me directly. I'll go into a little more detail. But it's definitely an important term. Home inspections, we like to look for things that are going to be as easy as possible, uh, again, for a seller and not somebody that's necessarily going to, going to come back with a, a long punch list of things that are going to be um, you know, time consuming and, and, and devaluing to a seller. Uh, are there contingencies on the sale of another home? All obviously important components in selecting what's going to give us the most certainty when selecting the best offer. Uh, it's not always about price. A lot of times it's about the other terms as well. So we want to look at them all. Lastly, in obtaining the best financial outcome as a seller in today's uh, market, beware that there are pitfalls. It is a fast moving market, but it still maintains a relatively sensitive market. Uh, when we have multiple offers, we obviously are in a uh, strong position of leverage and of power, but we just want to be careful not to abuse it. Uh, sometimes dragging buyers along when there's only one uh, can do nothing but ultimately risk them walking away altogether. So we want to be real cognizant of gauging the temperature of the market. These are dialogues that sellers have with agents all the time and making sure that they're making the best decision on how to enter negotiations, uh, enter uh, multiple offer scenarios, and make the best decisions to get the sellers the best financial outcome. So um, those are a few tricks of the trade uh, that I'd like to share on how to select the best offer in a multiple offer situation. I hope this was valuable to you. Any questions, again, please direct them uh, to us. We always want to make sure that the information we're providing is the most valuable uh, information available to you in this market uh, so that you can make the best decisions possible as we move through what's going to be a, a continued sensitive next couple of weeks and probably next couple of months. But our expectations are for uh, probably the fastest moving spring that maybe we've ever experienced. So any questions, again, be in touch. Thank you for sharing a few minutes. Uh, have a fantastic evening and I look forward to seeing you real soon. Take care.